Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Kareem and today we're doing something a bit different. So before I get into the concept of this video, I just want to explain my thought process. Basically, when I was a kid I used to read a lot of fantasy series. I just loved being in the same universe with the same characters for such a long period of time. And then after the dystopian era of the early 2010s with uh, The Hunger Games, Divergent, The Maze Runner, I stopped and I really, really miss it. So one of my main goals this year is to read as many series as possible and I thought why not make videos out of it. So this is how the concept came to be. Basically I read the first book of four trilogies and then decided if I'm going to continue reading them or not. When I was listing all the series that I wanted to start reading, there were so many. So I grouped them into three categories, duologies, trilogies, and then series with over four books. I started with four trilogies that are so popular here on booktube. They've been on my radar for quite a while. Let's just dive right into the first trilogy. The first series that I started is the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. This series is so popular on YouTube. I've seen so many people talk about it. There's also a Netflix adaptation. Season 2 just came out a couple of days ago. But also there's this duology, the Six of Crows duology that is set in the same universe, the Grishaverse, that is just so loved. I just am so intrigued. And even though technically you can read it without reading Shadow and Bone first, I want to do it the way Lee Bardugo intended it to be done. And so I picked up Shadow and Bone first. So what is this story about? Basically it is set in a war-ravaged country that is torn into by this thing called the Shadow Fault. And we follow our main character, Alina, who is a cartographer. One day, as she is crossing this Shadow Fault with her regiment, they are attacked by monsters, and she reveals this dormant power that could be the key to freeing the country. So she is sent to be trained with the Grisha, the magical elite of the society. The first thing I want to say is that the writing is so easy to read, even though the world building was a bit confusing at first because of all the different names and factions and the magic system, the more I read, the clearer it all became and by the end I was completely hooked by the story. I liked our main characters, I liked the politics of this world, and I was just so intrigued by the plot. I wanted to know what was going to happen. I finished it in two or three days. Obviously, I decided that I'm going to continue this series, and I already ordered the next two books, which are Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising. I'm so excited. Don't they all look so good together? The next book that I read is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, which is book one in the last hours trilogy, which is part of the Shadowhunter universe. Now, I've talked about this universe many times on this channel, uh, whether it's in my top 10 books of 2022 video where I mentioned Clockwork Angel or in my March wrap up where I read City of Heavenly Fire. This series is set right after the events of the Infernal Devices, so I was so excited to be back into this universe in that Victorian era with the same characters or at least the descendants of these characters. At first I was a bit confused with all the new characters, so much so that I made a family tree. And honestly what can I say other than that I loved every single second of this book. I just can't, I, I don't know how to explain how much I love this universe, how much I love those characters and the plot in this one is so interesting. I loved how the villain and the problem is based on something that happened in the Infernal Devices. I don't want to say too much, but whew, the writing is incredible as always. There are so many characters, but they're all so well written and they have their own personalities and there are so many different relationships and, and dynamics between those characters. I just don't have the words. This is easily one of the best Shadowhunter books that I've read so far. I'm so happy that I finally started the series because the FOMO was killing me. I just wanted to know what people were talking about. And I even ordered the second book already, which is Chain of Iron. I haven't started it yet, but I... Ugh, I can't. I can't wait. And then I read A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which is book one in the... I believe it is called Shades of Magic trilogy. It is basically set in a world where there are four parallel universes and there are only a few people that can travel between them, and they are called Antari. Our main character is one of those magicians. His name is Kel, and he works as an ambassador for the different regimes. Overall, I didn't really enjoy this book. My main issue was the characters. I just found them so one-dimensional, so dull. I just couldn't bring myself to care 
or to feel engaged by what was happening. It did get better by the end, but personally I mostly like character-driven stories. So in order for me to care about a book that has dull characters, the plot needs to be exceptionally great, which is not the case in this one. I don't think I will be continuing this series. I read the synopsis of the second and third book and honestly I'm just not excited. There are so many other series that I want to start so I just don't want to waste my time with a series that I'm not that excited about. So I think this is going to be the end um, for the Shades of Magic series. And then the final book that I read for this challenge is The Poppy War, which is book one in the Poppy War trilogy by R.F. Kuang. <sighs> I don't even know where to start from. Maybe the plot. Basically, this is a historical and military fantasy that is inspired by the Sino-Japanese War. We follow Ren, a poor orphan who to the surprise of everyone, including herself, is accepted into the most elite military academy. And so as she is training and studying to become a warrior, uh, a war erupts between the empire and its neighboring nation. And so she is called to the front lines. I don't want to give more details because I feel like the less you know the better, but just know that there is war, there is magic, there are gods. I really love the politics in this world. There are many metaphors surrounding the opium drug that plays such a central role in this story. The book also deals with themes of racism, classism, and the question of how far are you willing to go to win a war, even if it means losing your humanity. Not only are the characters so well written, but Arf Kuang has written the best morally great characters I have ever had the pleasure to read about. I love our main character, Rin. I was rooting for her from page one, but I'm also so scared of her because the things she does in this book are insane. Reading this book was so stressful because there are so many things happening. There are twists and turns, and I honestly could not figure out where the story was going to go. By the end of the book, the end of each chapter shocked me to my core. There are three very distinct parts in this book, which makes me think that this book could have been a trilogy by itself. I could have read another extra 300 pages of Rin just being in that academy and training because there's just so much content and so many stories to tell. At the beginning, I felt like the transition between those different parts was not very well done. I felt like the pacing was a bit uneven and so in my head I was thinking yeah this is gonna be a four-star book but then when I finished it it's like how could I possibly give this book anything less than five stars when I picked up this book I only knew that it was adult fantasy and I thought it was labeled this way because of the complexity of the politics or the magic system or the themes that are tackled I did not expect this level of descriptive violence there are so many graphic scenes in this book so honestly if you cannot handle blood and very descriptive graphic scenes, then this book may not be for you, but oh my god. I finished this a couple of weeks ago, but I'm still blown away by how much I love this book and I cannot wait to read the rest of the series. I honestly have no idea where the story could go in the next two installments. And so obviously I had to I ordered the second and the third book, so The Dragon Republic and The Burning God in hardback because I just feel like now this is a series that I want to own in hardback and not in paperback. I'm itching to read them. So these are the four series that I started for this challenge. Shadow and Bone, The Last Hours, Shades of Magic and The Poppy War series. This was a very successful challenge, if I do say so myself. I discovered two potentially all-time favorite series uh, and another great one, Shadow and Bone. I'm so excited to finish those three series. I'm obviously gonna keep you guys updated during my monthly wrap-ups. I really want to continue doing this concept with the other series on my list, so let me know if this is something that you would love to see on this channel. If you read or decide to read any of these series, um, please let me know what you thought. If you have any recommendations for series that you think I might love, please write them down below. I'm mostly into fantasy, but I'm honestly open to any genre. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to help this channel grow. I'm gonna go um, back to reading and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.